Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late here. You did good. Can, uh, <laughs> do we uh, can open this? Any amendments to the agenda? A couple of things. Quick. No, they'll be real quick. Uh, okay. 22 Jenkins Place was the replanting plan. Yeah. Um, 60 Oceanside was a request about a planting plan that Rich went out and visited. And Mr. Salamando has condos on the river, and he had some questions about uh, an amendment and some mitigation. But we can get something in writing from them, but we can, I can just let you know what it's about. Okay. Those condos are the ones that are just um, that he just mentioned. We're also, did you get that piece in, Carol, on, um... Yeah, look at your red and red and red. The squash capon, I saw that kind of going back and forth. I just wanted to address that real quick. And, um... And then minor activity permits, maybe we can talk that over and Hummerock beach grass. But we do want to, in light of uh, other things going on this evening, we'll try to make it... <laughs> Make it quick. Um, so I'll accept the agenda with those um, pieces. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thanks. Um, maybe first introduce our new members. I'm sorry. Can Lisa Case. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you? I'm thanks. terrific. Thanks for uh, jumping in. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And Bill, Bill Schmidt, I right? Bill. Yeah, yeah. And we've met before. Yep, at some yep, other. I've been. I was at the waterways. Actually, I was in front of this board at the other end of the when we were with waterways too. Yeah, but. Uh, and you still agree delighted. To join? <laughs> yes. Delighted to be here. I think that this is one of the more most important boards in the in the town. So, thank thanks you. for having me. Yep. Thank you very much. And then maybe take a minute. We could just thank our the folks that are getting off between Tony and Penny um, for uh, all of their time. Who did I forget? Todd. 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 Yeah. Again. But, you know, we've been fortunate that they've been willing to do that. And uh, it does take a lot of effort. I mean, the meetings are just a small part of what we do. You'll find that there's lots of things to search out or different parcels. And it's really interesting. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So, but thank those members for doing such a great job. And I know Tony mm -hmm. and Penny will um, have agreed to keep up with some piece that they're interested in. I think Tony's still working on some CRs and Penny's got a couple of projects that she's already kicked off, so mm -hmm. good. So we can um we don't have any RDAs. No. Okay, so why don't we do some of this um uh agents report pieces? You wanna do that? Okay. Um, the treatment plant, we got an anonymous call um, on the sewage treatment plant and there had been some grit that was laid out to dry and then it rained and it got washed around and then it got uh, taken care of by Public Works according to what Al has told me. Uh, then today there was um, a follow-up email that wanted to make sure that we checked it out to make sure it didn't make it down into the marsh. So I got that email today. but. According to the people at the treatment plant and to Public Works, it was um, it was not the worst of the um, sewerage that they deal with. It's a grit that they clean out of a settling area, yeah. and they do dry it out and then they haul it off somewhere. But when it rained, it got yeah, spread out further than usual. It gets unstable. But yeah. I saw I followed the correspondence you had with Al, and he noted that he had spoken to somebody at DEP. Yeah, DEP came out to investigate. You have to report that if you run on the treatment plant, that DEP has to come out, so. Did you know that, are they satisfied with what they did? What they usually do is if they're not, they call conservation, they say we want follow up on this, so they must have been satisfied with it, so. Okay. But, uh, but I think with the follow up email I got today, um, you know, it's worth taking a trip out there just to make sure because um, Al's answer wasn't totally satisfying to right. the reporter. So. Okay. Did you? So you did get there, and it. No, I got the email today oh, from right. the guys. So, but I, you know, just to follow up one more time, go out and then email back to the person who contacted. Well, I, not to make more of a project out of it, Pat, but if you found out who from DEP they 
contacted yeah. with and maybe yeah. you could just shoot them something and I'd like to let them think at least that we're yeah, what they usually do, if it's uh, related to water pollution, something like that, they handle it. If it looks like a wetland's been impacted, they always call it conservation. But um, I'll call them just to find out. Because sometimes they, okay. they call us right away when they get a report. They say, oh, it's in the marsh, it's a boat, lost yeah. its gas or something. So. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Um, 10 Driftway. This was one that um, I had mentioned before. The very end of Driftway, right at Third Cliff, and the person wants to put in a porch, it's extending a porch, but it involves a frost wall, frost foundation. It's more than 50 feet from the edge of the cliff, but in the past, I don't know how you've dealt with coastal bank um, structures. I know that um, it's more than 50 feet, so that covers our regulations, but is there any extra review because of instability? We've, had, we've asked people to show us clearly how they're going to do some things. I mean, that, that whole cliff is like a glacial till. Yeah. That once it gets disturbed, can become real unstable, kind of like that sludge. Right, right. And where it's so close, you, you know, uh, if people know that they've got to be real careful with how they excavate, you know, that they don't over-excavate, how they put it all back together. But, I mean, so much of that cliff's been falling away. Mm -hmm. We've tried to make sure that, um, I assume it's still within 100, Still within 100, so he knows he has to file. And then I said that I'd talk it over with you guys because most things outside 50, they don't, but a bank, we may want them to, so. I, I, think, I think it's worthwhile. Okay. Usually we ask them to get some sort of information from an engineer that will say that they're not um, decreasing the stability of that bank. Do you know offhand it, what, if it's just a porch why they're they're going with a whole frost wall instead of piers? Yeah, I asked them. Yeah, like a lot yeah. less disturbance yeah. if it's a porch. Right, I told them, I said, gee, it'd be a lot easier from a permitting point of view if you put in sauna tubes or something like that. Right. Um, this is the engineer and this is the way he preferred to do it, but maybe we could, you know, present this other money. option and see what they say. Yeah, I, I, I think it's thing. fairly important. Um, you know, we've had a number of bank stabilization projects and we've had people come in and we've asked them to pull the project back or yeah. be cautious with the foundations. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Okay. All right. And if he wants to keep the frost wall the four foot, I'll say maybe need to file an NOI and yeah. if he wants to come back and talk about filings, then maybe it could be. Okay. An RDA or something like that. Okay. But I think the least intrusive would be better. Okay. All right. All right. Um, the Pier Repairs, Chapter 91, this um, is on Central Ave, number 271, the Duffy property, and um, I, we couldn't find, Carol and I couldn't find any notice of intent for the original pier construction or repairs, because they have to go to Chapter 91 after notice of intent. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if anybody was around in the past when this has been discussed. Uh, has it been, does he have a license? Then she, know. I mean, she should. She, she, the, I don't think she's ever done anything with it. I think there was a license by a previous owner yeah. for this, and it's in perpetuity. Does that get recorded? Um, I don't know what DEP does in the waterways division, but they had to have gotten an NOI before they were allowed to build right. here, unless it was before 19. I was going to say it depends on when it was originally built because right. some people just keep maintaining. Right. Yeah. But does a cha I don't know if a Chapter 191 license gets recorded. I think it would. I think it does, but, yeah, so but if, if there is an NOI, do we extend it to allow repairs? Or I don't, this is my first look at one of these. So I think I think we want to find out if the, if the thing even has a license because yeah. we're obviously not going to grant them permission to repair something right, that's right. illegal right in my mind yeah and then if she does have a license then we can look at the extent of the work and decide what we can we can grant if it's yeah. if it's sim simple maybe it's an idea uh, that's simple. I think Carol did a handout a one page handout from um, the engineer or from the um, the piling person, the uh, contractor. So it looks like there's a bit of work involved. Yeah, if they're just replacing though existing ones in the same footprint in the same place, that's not that big a deal. Like Frank said, as long as it they have a license. They come in at the high tide and they bang them in, take out the old one. It's this is the wrong address though. This is it's a 293, I believe, isn't it? 
This says 271? No, I think she's 271. Really? Yeah. I okay. I know we have so many files in that address, I <laughs> maybe. But this is her anyway. Okay. Well, let's find out if it's if it has a license. Okay. And then if it has a license and as Paul said, if it's going in, you know, taking it out, putting it back in, I, I think we could look at it. Being allowed under chapter 91 type It's an of RDA kind of piece and we'll have some sort of restriction. But if it's not, then I think she's got a lot more to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oceanside Drive, this was a uh, the town seawall repair job. And the contractor, when he was done with his work, washed all the uh, concrete off onto the beach. Nice. And, uh, any of you guys? Just putting the sand back. Yeah. A so couple of additives. They talked to Al and Sean went down there and spoke to them. They took it out, cleaned it up, and we got a couple of emails from the neighbors thanking us for, you know, getting them to remove it. But I mean, they. This is a big company. They know not to. You would think. Like that. Yeah. The but the, also the contractor, and the engineer for the contractor should designate a washout area for a mixer. Right, right. Well, that's in the notice of intent that the town has, right. but the contractor may never have, you know, seen it. Spread the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that one's done. Um, 8 Dartmouth, I'm going to have to get back to you on. I don't think I made it out there. I don't even know what this well, one is. Pat, well, there is no 8 Dartmouth. There's 9 Dartmouth. But there's eight no eight. Okay, oh. so so that's the condos. Oh, okay, so that's, that's what the condos. It is. All right. Okay, that would make sense. So, what happened on this one? This was permitted with um, public <coughs> access in mind. So there's so many uh, slips were for the public. He wants to privatize the slip so that the residents in the building get first crack at it, and they, they may not be any open to the public. So he has to give a public benefit some other way. So he's coming back to us saying, can he amend his order of conditions, expand the public ramp that goes down there, which isn't real useful right now because it doesn't go deep enough into the water, and have that count as his uh, mitigation. And I said that it involves, um, it'll involve waterways, people involve um, Harbor Master, and it also involves DEP, who, gave the permit in the first place. They might not think this is enough mitigation. So I said I'd speak to the commission and meet with Mark Patterson. And if you guys have thoughts on this, or if you want to visit it, this ramp that he's talking about is in between the condos and some old kind of beat up looking boat. Yeah, ramp. yeah. So. It's where the boatyard. And is this enough to offset the public slips that would have been available? You know, this thing's so old. I honestly can't remember all the pieces. here's the deal I can tell you the deal there's like there's 20 or 21 slips there's 17 units and their plan is to give the they're gonna take the marina and give it to the homeowners when all the properties sell and so the homeowners association is gonna manage the marina and theoretically if everybody used a slip there would be four left for the public that they could rent out at market price mm -hmm. or anybody who doesn't take a slip but I, I guess now maybe they they have some people who want two slips or something. But that that was kind of their plan. They have mm. a, around 21 slips and 17 units. That's exactly right. But it, under yeah, exactly right. Chapter yeah. 91, they have to provide some good public access. So right. whether this is enough or not is it'll it'll have to be another discussion with us. But I just wanted to throw it out there, and I'll talk right. to Mark and see. Originally, he wanted to do clamming beds, add some clamming beds somewhere else, mm. but. Uh, I don't know who, maybe it's DEP that said, no, you have to do something on site. Right. Actually, a boat ramp would might even be more use to the public than four slips. But, but you're going to modify part of the river right. to... Right. Well, right. you do, especially now, the right. way that the way that it's filled in. Yes. Uh, it's so shallow there now. It would have to be extended quite a ways. If there's a ramp, is there parking for the trailers after you use the ramp? Or no. do they well, go yeah, around no. the... Uh, no, yeah. there's no parking. Yeah. No. So that would be something. So, anyways, if anybody wants to... Email me. Do we have um? Do we have any sort of written or formal proposal from no, the applicant? He, he just kind of run it by first, and then he's going to do that. And he knows we have to talk to the. So he's looking so. for direction. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. And can he it's do it under guy. an amended NOI? It seems like. Um, I mean, it's not. It wouldn't be a minor revision if he's going out into the river. 
Uh, we'd have to look at what he's planning to do if this is the plan he goes with, extending a ramp. It seems like that's... But again, as yeah. Paul points out, if, if, if there is a great ramp there, but no one can use it, what benefit? I, I guess I'd have to see what the benefit would be. Right, right, that. right. Um, right. So he, we could ask him to come in at a meeting, too, and just... Unless he right. wants to put an RDA in and, you know, or we could just bring him in. I, well, they can submit a request. I, I, I think will. it's something that we could really review yeah. exactly what they're proposing and then we could take a look at it. But right. I, I think it would have to, if, if DEP's already said no to off-site mitigation, yeah. so you've got to come up with something on site that's going to be worthwhile. Yeah. All right. And I'll meet with Mark because he might have, Mark Patterson, he might have some requirements or problems with what he's planning to do. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Cairo Circle, this was a septic call and um, septic system can be kept outside the 50, but there was a lot of stuff in the wetlands, so they're getting a letter saying, you know, You'll be allowed to do your work, but you should help us out by taking up. There's probably 20 years worth of grass clippings and leaves and everything in the middle of the skunk cabbage and everything else. So, um, so I'll just send a letter and I'll send a copy to everybody. Yeah. Asking them to clean it up. Okay. Okay. Um, 22 Jenkins Place. Uh, we went out there. Frank and I went out there. This was a house that's going for sale, and the guy was required to do planting in the back. And uh, it's all grown in, and it's against the stream. So we said, you know, there's a lot of invasives. Maybe we get some rid of some of this, and then have a planting plant. So I went out there with the landscaper and the homeowner, and he he's coming up with a pretty good planting plant. It's three different types of plants. It's not going to be clearing everything because it would disturb the stream bank. So there'll still be some invasives out there. But it looks like if he submits this plant, something we could live with. Um, it's like yeah. 25 plants or so and uh, so. I think that's I mean and he's taking all that debris out there's like a tree hut and a, and a crossing there's like a homemade bridge over the stream there's a whole bunch of stuff so that's all it seems out. like a Sounds pretty good. simple fix if he does all the stuff that he says he yeah put through there yeah so he's gonna submit the plan to us okay and the request for a certificate and the engineered plans for the as bill for the house okay so. Um, that's an old project. Yeah, that, that's a while ago, and I think that's. Yeah. Um, on Musquashka Pond, I saw a few things fly back and forth, and just before you go too far into that, I mean we've had a lot go on with Musquashka Pond. It went way back when there was all kinds of um, there weren't midges or mosquitoes, but there was some other insect that always invaded the place. And, um, when you, we were treating it with different things and then went to a system of removing the gates so that the tidal water could just yeah. move back and forth freely. Um, I don't know whether maybe with some of the washover some of that's changed around but occasionally there's been allergies especially when we have a lot of fresh water mm -hmm. which I have a feeling that this is really all it is. I'm no, I'm no scientist but it kind of yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we may see this kind of clear up in time, but if it's right. bad, I, I, Jennifer had mentioned that Board of Health actually used to deal with yeah. part of it. Yeah. Um, and then Al said it was a lot better since the flushing's been increased by lifting up the... Right, because of the tide and salt water. But they actually cut a couple of channels to get into the southern <coughs> part of... I was just going to say, what happened with the last storm is that those channels from pond to pond to pond had clogged up. Right. So they cleared them up and now that there's more flow there, I think it'll get better. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. And Jason Burton uh, um, already had a time set up to go out there with Sarah Grady. Yeah. And so they're going to be looking at the growth and stuff this week. So okay. he's going to get back to us. But yeah, I, I figured there'd be a lot of history to this. why so I sent it to you and Jennifer and Al and Jason. Yeah. So. But I wouldn't even be surprised if it's just we've had so much fresh yeah. water that yeah. that's compounded that problem this spring, you know, yeah. early summer. Um, one of the things I know we've just been talking about back and forth is the minor activities and trying to come up with some sort of, it, when we have a project,
typically people would come to the agent or the office and try to determine whether or not their project would need to file a notice of intent, which is more um, detailed and involved, or an RDA, which is request for a determination. So they could come in and find out if they're in jurisdiction or if it's, a, if it's not too great a project, we could um, put some simple restrictions or w mm -hmm. whatever on the, on the project. Um, since Pat's been the agent, there's also a process of granting a person permission for a minor activity. If it's a real small thing, cutting a couple of small trees that might have fallen or something that's close to a wetland or cleaning up a piece, um, maybe something that's broken right on the ocean without having the person get um, involved in a larger filing, mm -hmm. um, that we could consider that. Um, and it's something that we should kind of think about as a commission and if we are going to do it, how are we going to follow it so that um, we have a tracking system for an RDA or an NOI, these minor activities, if it can be in some sort of folder or something, you know, we obviously don't want to find out later that other people have done that without permission. Um, but in some ways, giving somebody a simple way to do a small job, they're more apt to come before the commission and do it right mm -hmm. as opposed to, um, you know, try to just avoid the whole process. So I'm not opposed <coughs> to it, but I think we have to think about how we're going to monitor it. And then it's going to consume some of your time and Carol's time. In the past when we file an NOI or an RDA, we get a fee for a permit, which com goes into your budget or it goes into the general fund, but essentially compensates for some of your times. And whether or not we should think about whether there should be a small filing fee with that might be some things to consider. So I I think it's something we, I'm not opposed to, but I want to make sure we do it um, in an organized way and so that we're just not. Um, a lot of it came out of the uh, emergency storm repairs. Right. We have people who are moving stone from the front of the house back onto the beach and if you had people five, they would have had a hundred filings for and, and something. The, that and and the state made it clear that yeah. if you got your work done by a certain date, you could do, go back to pre-storm conditions, you had to notify the commission and and that lasted for about three weeks. But we're talking about continuing that. Right. Yeah. So I think we need to yeah. just think about a process that Carol can follow and you can follow. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd be all too willing to say, yeah, that doesn't look like a big deal, and then I'd forget altogether. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so by posting something with, a, with our okay on it, people around them say, okay, they went through the process rather than calling us, or other people say, gee, maybe I should call before I do something because... But if you, you know, it's the same way with getting a building permit for replacing windows or roofs. Some people might say, ah, geez, that's yeah. a pain in the neck. I'd rather just right, right. do the work. But right. if it's a simple enough process and you can go in and get it done and it's a small charge, people would would do what they're supposed to do. And then in the process, they might find out, yeah, you know, you're supposed to install a certain product in this location or, or whatever. So it's yeah. the same thing. You'd, whether we had a handout or whatever said, here's the rules. And then if, if someone ignores that or goes beyond it, you could say, wait a minute, you know, you were yeah. just in, you got the sheet, what, right. what didn't you understand here? Yeah, the first thing we noticed that um, someone bringing in a dumpster really need to check where they're going to put the dumpster if it's down near the beach, you know, so it might not be a, a minor activity, it might be, you know, you're really you're close to the beach here, you need to file an RDA. Well, you, know. you might not have to, though, as long right, as you right. understood the process right, right. and you didn't damage the, right. the dune or something, so, yeah. all right? All right. So, so we maybe we can put a little bit of guidelines yeah. together on that. Okay. Um, and beach grass, Humrock beach grass, is on my. Carol, is that? That's what you were mentioning, grass. Oh, Rich. Yeah, Rich and I went out to a house to somebody who wanted to put down. Oh, oh, uh, 60 Ocean. Is that yeah. what you're talking Oceanfront? Yeah. And they're going to be taking up some pavement and yes. they wanted to put lawn down but then they also wanted to put lawn closer to the beach which is sand and what we talked about maybe there would be a way to do some lawn you know where the pavement comes up but then some beach grass or rose or goes for some compromise where something better for the beach and doing would be closer to the seawall okay so i said you know we'd bring it up in a meeting and i'd get back to her and you the, know, she um, could 
the next door neighbor has Rosa Ragosa on the ocean side now. Mm -hmm. And looks and good. Yeah, it does. It does. But okay. it could be seagrass easily. Yeah. But right. would, yeah, but they would be, be getting rid of pavement. We would want to have something right. more natural. Yeah, get rid they of the would pavement. be getting rid of pavement on the street side. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So I'll I'll get in touch with her and she can file with us and let us know what she's planning on doing. Sounds okay. good. Well, we got time. We can start these now. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, Adams, seven hundred Glades Road. June on uh, June 24th, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. The Town Hall Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 um, of the Town of Citral Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Douglas Adams to construct an addition and install a septic system on property located at 700 Glades Road, situated by others and other interested parties are invited to attend. That? Go ahead. Okay. For the record, my name is Gregory Morse. I'm a registered engineer, Morse Engineering, representing Doug Adams, who's here with us tonight in the audience. The property is 700 Glades Road. This is out of the tip of Glades Road, um, out of the, uh, at the at the Glades Association, at a point that's called Strawberry Point. Uh, the existing Glades property is approximately 50 acres in size. Uh, this property here was developed with a single family home. You see the house here. We have a gravel driveway out of the Glades Road, which is significantly off the plan to the left. We have the Atlantic Ocean to the north, to the east, and to the south. This is all uh, a rocky bank around the property. Up to the edge of the bank, this is all maintained as lawn surface around the existing house. What we filed is we filed a notice of intent uh, for, in addition on the existing house, we're proposing to put a second story on. Uh, there's an addition to the first, first floor. There's a deck proposed. We're also proposing a new septic system uh, with the upgraded house. The resource areas that we have on the site primarily designated as land subject to coastal storm flowage, which is at elevation 16, that's per the latest FEMA map. And then we also have the top of the coastal bank. DEP has defined the top of the coastal bank as looking at land subject to coastal storm flowage and then how the slopes arise out of that zone. And it's the first significant break in slope where it ceases to be at a four to one slope, so it's the top of the coastal bank in this scenario. So this blue line here represents that point on the property that ceases to become four to one. Everything oceanward of that blue line is all subject to protection. You'll notice that up here where the house is, we're at elevation 37, 38. Again, that velocity zone is down at elevation 16, well below this house. This house sits up high on a rock cliff. Okay, so off of that top of coastal bank in red, we have the 50 foot buffer zone. And then in green, we have the 100 foot buffer zone. The existing house, you can see the improvement shown on that. In adjacent to the house, we're proposing to bring in um, some fill material. The existing grade around the house is approximately 41. We're gonna be raising that approximately a foot around the, the foundation, just to help with drainage away from the foundation right now and create a little terrace effect around the house. The septic system, all the plumbing will exit this point on the house to a new septic tank. The septic tank is located in that buffer zone, but the soil absorption system is located outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Also on the plan, the existing gravel driveway, we wanted to uh, spread approximately 20 yards of crusher run gravel over that driveway. It's been eaten up by plows and potholes over the years. We kind of want to fix that portion up. And you'll note that today I did submit a revised plan. I understand it doesn't comply with the requirement to get it in before this meeting. So if we have to continue, that's okay. But we had a separate detached one bedroom building over here we're proposing now on this plan to replace that. We're gonna raise that building and construct a new 20 by 30 
studio building in that location. We have soil stockpile areas outside the 100 foot buffer zone while they're building the septic. And then around our limit of work facing the ocean, we have a straw wattle and self soft barrier around as shown by the dash. DEP had no comments on this project, and I'll turn it over to you. Um, Pat, have you had a chance to look at that much? Maybe you want to start. Yeah, um, there wasn't a lot of narrative in there, but Greg just went through what the project is about. Um, a couple of questions. On the driveway, are you removing vegetation or expanding it, or is it just gravel for the same footprint? Basically gravel for the same footprint, except right up here. This is existing lawn that's kind of grown over. Up, up here, we will be cutting in new gravel in that portion, but no tree vegetation or woody vegetation. And foundation, is there going to be a new foundation in the area closer to the bank there, or is that the same here? footprint? Yeah. It's the, the same footprint. I think we were proposing new foundation underneath yeah. the house. 14 by 24 footprint, right in that part where the porch is down. So that, that's the only place with this new foundation? Yes. Oh, yeah. The remainder is just going to be. Uh, yes, the same thing. I'm sorry. Okay. And the accessory dwelling is, I mean, that's fairly close to the bank there. Yeah, the, the existing dwelling was inside the 50 foot buffer. With this one, we've moved it to just outside the 50 within a long area. <coughs> um, the, the building, the thing that says one, bed, one bedroom. That's the outline of the other one. So this is about probably three times the size of that. Uh, yeah, about three, three or four. About three times the size. Of the new building is 20 by 30 in size. Right, there was, um, on the first plan, there was a PVC gravity foundation drain and swale, riprap. What is that for? So, so right now we believe that there's some sort of drain that was constructed out here across the field, there's a clear indentation that something has been constructed. Mm -hmm. And basically what we're proposing with, with the new foundation uh, is to install just a, a perimeter drain inside the foundation with a, with a PVC pipe out to daylight. So we'll have some sort of overflow if there is groundwater. Uh, you know, there are significant ledge out crops here. So Sometimes during heavy rainfall events, you'll get groundwater into the foundation. Um, again, that just discharges to daylight. We were going to put some crushed stone at the end of you know, a four-inch PVC pipe. That's located in, in the field uh, as well. The last one that came in, the last uh, applicant, we were talking about top of the bank and stability and all of that. And I mean, the foundation is close to the 50, and the successory dwelling is close to it. I mean, we're trying to keep things as far from a bank as we can. Yeah. I, I understand that. Uh, I guess I would stress two things. The new, the new structure is outside the 50, number one. And number two, unlike over on the cliff, you know, that was mentioned where you have till material, this here is sitting on bedrock. That coastal bank is bedrock. So you're not going to be a subject to the erosion, unless you will be in other parts of town. You were able to get a perk in that location. Some of the the perk holes weren't as successful, and this one was okay. Yeah, well, we did we did three perk tests: five minutes an inch, three minutes an inch, and the slowest was nine minutes an inch. So all very very well suited for a new septic system. Um, Jennifer Sullivan has looked at the septic plan. She asked for some clarification on our bedroom count. That was her only outstanding comment. And we've clarified that with her at this point. Greg, is there any way to get the septic tank outside the 100? It seems like it's pretty close. Is there any way to just bump that out? Outside the hundred, the, the tank's outside the fifty. Yeah. 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 It's, it's right there. I don't know. 
it's not a big deal, why not move it? Yeah, I mean, I guess we, we could get it into this location right in here. There's a little bit of gray. And would the, where does the uh, extra bedroom or this new structure, where will that be draining? Where will the septic for that be? Same one? It's, it's all into this new septic system. Yeah. Is there any roof drainage for the, um, the single structure out there, the accessory structure? No, it all comes on. So I, this a new foundation going under a portion of the existing home? Is that shown here? Um, second floor addition and existing dwelling proposed foundation. But the foundation so I'm assuming is for the little addition. Right. So I, I can I can clarify <coughs> where that is. And probably what it entails. Okay. Is it a basement now or is it a yeah. slab? Right now it's a um, no, it's not a slab. I mean, there's, there's, there's block walls or concrete poured walls, and there's kind of some tunnels that have been dug out underneath it. So it's semi crawl space. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be digging out under it to make it a basement. Um, the new and the foundation for the new piece would be what? That would be slab. For the accessory building, that would be slab. Like a thickened slab or something yeah. protected from, so it's a substantial foundation. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have, um, you know, it would just be a four foot crossbow and a slab on So it's a pretty substantial foundation. That's what he said, he hasn't got enough approval. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if we'd ask questions. <laughs> so sometimes what we do is just work through members asking any questions they have about the project. Maybe I'll let Paul. And Richard, jump in first, all right? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, actually, you've answered most of the questions I immediately had, except where does the, um, where does the gravel, how is the drainage from where the gravel driveway, which direction does it go? It, it drains southeasterly into, into the ocean. This is all ocean all over here. Okay. The sheet falls across the driveway into the ocean. A clearer picture of this property might be if you look at the assessor's maps, which I attached to the back of the notice of intent. Uh, this this is the property here. It's it's out on the point, surrounded by water. Over there. I've and been this, out there. This dash line represents the driveway coming up to the site. Yeah, I've been out there. It's beautiful. For the moment, that's all. Paul. Well, uh, my comments are, you know, adding the two decks and the, and the grading on the foundation, it's already a developed area, it's away from the resource area. You know, I don't see that as real significant disturbance. Moving the cesspool to the new septic, that's a big plus. And then, yeah, the only thing is what you said, Frank, the accessory building. <coughs> you know, on one hand, it's a developed area. On the other, it looks like you'll be cutting into the tree line some on the 50-foot buffer. So, you know, that's the only issue I would say you might need to look at maybe moving it a little or some mitigation or shrinking it a little. The, the other stuff to me is not significant alteration to an area that's already lawn and yard. Yeah, I can, I can provide, like I said, I'll provide a little more detail on the foundations. Um, I would expect, because in test hole one here we did hit ledge, you know, this won't be a full excavation. We'll be pinning to, to some ledge in some locations. And then this tree line here really more is of a it's like a brush line, you know, that's established, but I'll provide additional information on that. Yep. Kevin? Bill, do you have any questions? Yes. Um, the top of the bank, Craig, has always been something that's a little iffy. Um, did you look at that at all, Pat? It is, it is ledge. It's all stone outcropping, but... Is it fairly clear that that... Um, uh, you know, the TEP has those damn charts with all the different I'll scenarios. Put it, I'll put it this way. This was the point that we felt comfortable walking up to before we were going to fall off. Okay. The bank. Yeah, so uh, DEP clarifies it basically as where the bank ceases to be four to one. Okay. Scenario. And I, I do believe that that's the accurate location. Okay. That, based on that. 
the top of the bank sort of drives everything else. Once that top of the bank is determined, then you go back your 50 feet and 100 feet from there. And it's sort of the same as a wetlands line. Those are the pieces that can be a variable. And then once you set those, then you know where your 50 foot setback is and your 100 foot setback. Um, so sometimes in the case of a project where that's could either be contested or not quite clear, we might have a consultant go out and take a look and determine that the, that is the true edge of the bank. Uh, you know, if you've got a topography there that shows that, is that marked in any way right now, the top of the bank, is it? Um, right, right now, no. I mean, up here by the house, it, it essentially follows the tree line, but it, it does jog out. Um, okay. It's not marked in the field. I'd be glad. I'd be glad to mark it up. You know, it might be something if we're going out there. To so out by the driveway, it is pretty much right against the driveway almost. You, get, you kind of go off the gravel and it's right there. And then as you get further away from the work, it drops down the slope a bit. So going out toward the point. Yeah, if that was marked, I mean, that might help people picture what we're reviewing. So. I also think if if we're going to be thinking about a, a larger building in the 100, some of the work that's in the 50, we ought to look at maybe the edge of that driveway, as Richard pointed out, if there's any chance of stopping any siltation or any wash off or anything that's heading towards the ocean might be something to consider. You know, that certainly getting the cesspool out of there and a good Title V leaching fit system is a good, is a real plus in my mind. It's big plus. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe some of those small pieces they could um, work on improving a little bit. All right. So what do we do? I think Those we're going to continue it for some information <coughs> on that. I'd like to know what the foundation, what you plan to do with the foundation, both the new piece and the, the work on the house. Maybe just a little um, cross section or sketch or something. All right. Okay. You need two, two, two yeah. weeks. Bruce, I'm the keeper of the. Uh, um, are you the? Um, uh, well, I'm gonna. <laughs> 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 wow. Bye. Yeah. Wow. Pass it to me. So, so what do you gonna, think? How much time do you need? He said Greg. two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So, so what have we got? Six thirty or six fifty on uh, July eighth. So I'll take a motion to extend um, Adams to six. Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty on July eighth. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sharon, <laughs> lot three, Man Hill Road. That's it. So you don't write yeah, about the wetlands. That it's continued or anything? No. Um, but you just first of all you come out same logic to the next agenda. Yeah. This is all new. Okay. This is continued. So it'll come out on the next agenda automatically. Uh, okay. So on uh Carol will use to set up the agenda. On June twenty fourth, two thousand thirteen at six forty PM meeting the town hall Citro Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under chapter one thirty one section four. Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Dakota Bylaws, regarding the application of Douglas Sharon to build a single family dwelling on property located at 124, Lot 3, Man Hill Road, situated. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Again, for the record, Greg Morse, Morse Engineering, representing Doug Sheeran, to be with us in the audience tonight. This is an NOI and stormwater permit hearing for a new single family home located at 124 Man Hill Road, uh, Lot 3. The lot line here is shown in bold. It encompasses 49,123 square feet. Approximately 25,202 square feet of that is upland area. To the north of us, to the west of us, is developed residential property. There are two undeveloped lots to the south of us, uh, and there is wetland to the east of us, coastal wetland. The 
resources on this plan were approved last year by this commission through an ORAD, or resource area delineation, which means that the commission reviewed the resources here. Uh, the resources shown are in the blue line here. This is a bordering vegetated wetland which traverses the site. There is also designated a FEMA floodplain, a land subject to coastal storm flowage zone AE at elevation 13. It follows the 13 contour across the site, shown here in purple. There was also a Tidal Creek off site to the east. Off of that Tidal Creek, we measured the 200 foot riverfront area which is shown in this black one. The most upgradient buffer zones were measured from the BBW which are the 50 foot no disturb zone shown in red and the 100 foot buffer zone shown in green. The proposed project as I said is a single family home located right here. Foundation is 53 feet off of the bordering vegetated wetland. No work is proposed in the riverfront area. No work is proposed in the land subject to coastal storm flowage or the flood plain. Access is off of Manhill Road. We're proposing uh, a driveway to service in. We have utility services, a water service, and underground utility service from Manhill Road to service the site. Sewer service is provided out to Hadley Road. The entire sewer system is outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. To mitigate stormwater for the site, we have crushed stone infiltration trenches along either side of the driveway, and then we have a series of three, three so excuse me, four precast uh, dry wells servicing the roof. In total, we mitigate stormwater flows for the the one, the two, the 10, and 25 year storm events. We're not releasing any more water than what currently exists at the site. For the 100 year storm event, we mitigate the volume of storm water. We're not releasing more water, but we do not meet the rate of runoff. The rate has a slight increase from 2.2 CFS to 2.8 CFS. The bylaw and the Wetlands Protection Act allow sites to increase the rates of runoff where they're discharging directly to a body of water that's subject to coastal storm flowage. That's what we have here with no down gradient uh, of waters or down gradient receptors that would be inundated by that slight increase in 100 year storm. In this Again, DEP had no comments on this project. Um, do you want to start? Well, I was just, um, some of the things you look at, it's very tough to build right up against the buffer like that. I mean, calling the house is at like 53 feet. It's tough to even get a piece of equipment around there. So I don't know if that's realistic to think that it could be there without any disturbance. Um, the other question, I mean, it, anybody consider like a, a pervious driveway rather than, you know, an asphalt driveway in this area? Um, I think another than that, they've requested a stormwater permit review, and I think that that's the main issue on the site is um, drainage calculations. We need we need somebody to check on those just to make sure. Um, those uh, were submitted. Right, right, but I mean the the town should probably have somebody look at those. You're the only engineer out of this group, so we. But um, I, I'd say that you know maybe pulling the house back or changing the angle of it it's so that uh, you can keep outside the 50. Um, Richard? Not at the moment. Paul? Um, yeah, along with Pat, a few projects we've done like this, I know we've, we've uh, had actually had them pull the house back a little so they have room to work. And this, this is one of those that I think, uh, you know, probably a fence and signs Along because you're pushed right up against it. It doesn't take long till you brush hog back to the wetlands <laughs> over uh, <coughs> over time. But it looks like you could probably have enough room there to play, and so you don't disturb the uh, no disturb zone. Kevin, that's a good point. How how far is it from from Hallelujah? Can, is it possible to push it back? Well, it's. It's right up against the setback. The setback's at 30, uh, and we're right at 30.4. And then, you know, the 
the driveway here, I think we have the house pinned at yeah, 34 feet off of the side, you know, which is really the minimum you want for a driveway entrance like that, a side entry. Uh, one thing that I can certainly talk with the applicant I think we'd be willing to do would be uh, if we were to shorten the house, say an additional two feet, we could get up to a 55 foot setback, you know, and get five feet around the house. That's that is. Yes, do you want to make any comments? Mm, nothing. No. No. Thank you. Um, the vegetation that's below this house. What is? Do you know what it is primarily? I I don't only because I relied on the whole ramp. I didn't have a scientist go out. I'm just wondering what there is for invasives and what sort of material plantings vegetation exist in that between the wetlands and the 50 I don't have it's, yeah it's really thick briar it's almost impenetrable to get out there I mean I couldn't even tell whether all the flags are up or not because it's really yeah it's tough yeah. it's it's a lot of um there's some fragmites out there too but it's mostly briar you know brush and briar okay Um, how about anybody in the audience? Is there any comment from any anybody in the audience? Yes, ma'am. And you need to just state your name and address. Okay. Um, my name is Bonnie Sullivan. I live at 382 Avenue Road. In so you're directly above the. I'm directly above, and I have my own plan here. Sure. I can't see that plan. Okay. Um, I have some problems with this plan because this driveway is going to be right below my tennis court. There's a very steep grade from my tennis court that goes down to where the driveway is going to be proposed. A lot of runoff. Um, you ask what vegetation is down there, swamp cabbage, fragmites, briars. You can barely walk in there. You know, the new people set the line last year, and I know you, you approved it. Well, we didn't areas. set, I mean, we had you a. Know, you had people come in. Right. You know, to go in there and even check. It's only this spring that they broke through so they could show developers and prospective buyers mm -hmm. exactly what the land entailed. They didn't do that for the wetland thing. I'm, I'm wondering if people were able to get in there to see what was in there. Um, I also have problems with the squash pit. It's had a breach. It's very wet in there. I've lived in that in front of that house or behind it where it's been proposed for 33 years. It's filled in there a lot with the water. The road has been compromised. The town didn't even push back the rocks this year. The owners of those houses on State Lane have to push back their own rocks. Um, it's just very, very wet, and I feel like this house is being shoehorned in. The 50-foot buffer zone is right on the edge. Um, I've sat in enough of these meetings to know you come down very hard on people that disturb the 50-foot buffer zone. I can't see them getting any equipment in here without disturbing it. And a bunch of hay bales is just not going to do it. And that's what's proposed there. Um, and as for snaking up to, to um, Cavalry Road with the rat tail, um, this, this, this property wouldn't even be felt without that rat tail. And I know it's legal in situation, I know it's illegal in other times. But um, I really think you have to scale back the size of this house. The deck is 22 by 37 feet. That's overhanging wetlands, where there's ragmites and swamp cabbage. This man here measured it for me. Paul? Is Paul? Uh, no, okay. somebody previous to me. Previous yeah. to you. The other thing, I want to make sure that Moss Engineering um, put the right people on for right beside it, because according to my map, there's a few things wrong here. Um, I hope it was corrected, because according to this map, we have Mary Adams as the abutter on the other side of the road and it's Jim Lewis. And down the road toward the squash pond, it says the Zambos, they live beside the Adams on Hadley Road. So they took Hadley Road and actually turned it down the hill extension. And the locust map in the corner has the lot that's marked as the lot we're discussing as Jim Lewis's house, not as this lot. And 
to be a little sarcastic here, but as usual, the squash trick pond is always, it's never put on any of these maps. And it's a, it's a real issue down there. That pond feeds into other ponds. It's a huge pond. And on this focus map, it looks like it's all by itself out here without the creek that comes in and, and goes across. <coughs> so I don't know if there's anything else wrong on this map, but they couldn't get the abutters correct. And they couldn't get the locust map correct. So that's what I have to say about this project. Thank you. Welcome. Would anybody else like to comment? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, when you spawned on 20 cent lane, so I'm below where this house would be, I just want you to be aware of how um, Manhill Road extension is just completely falling apart from the winter and doesn't seem to be getting any attention. I'm concerned about the sides of the roads that are falling into the marshes. Um, we have a lot of illegal parking. They're going up the berm right over to the beach now. Yesterday there was a jeep that just parking there. The town doesn't do anything about it. And I think this is related because the whole, the whole street is, is really falling apart. And you can't get by if there was an emergency vehicle. I realize that's more of a piece. Yeah, the, just so that you are aware, the purview of the Conservation Commission would be impact on the wetlands the surrounding wetlands. If there's an issue with, say, the road or improvements, that would either be the DPW or possibly zone, not to pass the buck, no, but no, I, I if, that, if I that were to create, say, just don't inter interrupt, but if that were creating an erosion issue or, but parking, um, road travel, road width is is not the purview of the Conservation Commission. I realize that. I think what I'm saying is there is a lot of erosion and there's, um, you were saying that the flooding, there was, it's flooding constantly at the bottom of the road now. Mm -hmm. You were saying that it got cleared out or something, but the last rainstorm we had, it was, we couldn't really get past the flooding. So I think there is some conservation issues on Manhole Road extension that should be looked at. And I think whatever comes up here needs to be looked at in light of the fact that the road is really falling apart. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I mean, Dan, what in the Manhill Road. First question is um, on the floors. Do they have to be certified in situ? There are both certified and not certified vernal pools. Okay. And has that area been looked at? I know there's nukes down there during a certain season. As far as whatever other wetland species, there was what we call an, an ANRAD. There was a wetlands delineation done on this property about a year ago, and the applicant had a wetland scientist to determine the wetlands line. Then the commission hired someone to come out and review that line and look at the resources in that area. And the reason a lot of people do that is because they want to know in advance what sort of issues they're going to have when they go to do something to the property and that's a process that people are entitled to do so that they can go forward with their project. So the, the wetlands line and the resource areas adjacent to that were established last year. If there was a piece of information that was not, that was say left out or was inaccurate, the Commission can readdress that. But we don't have any knowledge of that. I think Mrs. Sullivan was commenting on the piece that there's not, it's difficult to access the property and know what's in there till it gets cleared out. If someone were to clear out a large area and say discover something that was there that was not delineated or made aware to the commission, then certainly that could be an issue. But we did have a good number of people look this project over. I believe there was actually a few wetlands scientists, if I'm not mistaken, review these lines. I mean, it was discussed. Well, they do soils as part of the wetlands um, marking. I, I don't recall all the, the pieces, but I know that it was looked at and discussed pretty extensively during that, that process. And it would be unreasonable to say to the applicant that line's wrong. 
unless there's some reason to prove otherwise. Now, again, if they were to go in and clear this and there was something there that was unseen at the time, then that certainly could be a potential issue. But I think those lines were already established um, a, a year ago under that review and we sort of have to work with those lines. Now what we look at now is <coughs> how far away the project is from the wetlands. We have a 50 foot no build and then we have a 100 foot buffer. When a person wants to build in the 100 foot buffer they also have to offer mitigation to the surrounding area to offset the disturbance that they've done, whether it's additional plantings, whether it's, um, as Mr. Morse pointed out, there's some trenching and things like that, but we need to look at all of that and determine what sort of impact they're having in the 100 foot buffer and are they offsetting that disturbance with some other type of mitigation. Those are one of the things that we look at. Um, because the project is um, adjacent to a wetlands, the Conservation Commission will do the stormwater review and look at where the runoff's going to go. Once you disturb an area and you make areas impervious, what's going to happen with the water that you divert? And has that been taken care of or addressed properly? Those are the kind of things we should address at this meeting. Um, the fact that they want to build very close to the 50, is there enough room for a piece of equipment to maneuver around that building to say excavate and backfill and then maintain the house later on. Can you literally put staging and um, ladders and things around without being in the in the 50 foot buffer? So those are the kind of things I think the commission has to take a hard look at. Um, you were talking about all right, the, the vernal pools. You said I don't think of a vernal pool was never brought to the commission's attention. I'd, I'd be a little surprised if there was a vernal pool in an area that had salt pieces. In, I'm not saying there couldn't be one there, but it was never brought to anyone. It, it was none marked and none shown with the different people that looked at it. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. My name is Richard Bustle, and I live at 114 Manhill Road, so at the top of the hill of the ground uh, across the street from Manhill Extension. Um, I just want to say that I walk down that hill every day, nearly every day for the last eight years, including during the major storms that we've had, and seeing the water pouring off out of this vegetation and off of this piece of property and down the Hill extension and contributing to the flooding and flooding. So, uh, you know, I hear that the statistics about 100 year storms, it seems to me that in the past eight years, we've already had three of these storms. And the plans that I see to, uh, to technically be on the right side of this 50 foot buffer zone, uh, to me are, are a technicality and certainty that, that as you mentioned already, the ability to get <coughs> equipment in there and do the work is highly suspect. And to, to suggest that being uh, you know, within a, a foot or two of that line and putting up hay bales is going to protect these wetlands from the runoff that's going to come down from there is just is missing the point. And with all due respect, I feel like uh, you, you really are shoehorned to this property, into the, uh, this dwelling into this property. And uh, if you can build that piece of property, if that, that dwelling in that piece of property, then I don't know what building you do to have to happen uh, from a conservation point. Well, just from a, just I appreciate your input. The Commission's purview is not to deny a project. It's to make sure that they are compliant with the, not only the state regulations for DEP, but also the town bylaws. So, you know, in fairness to both sides, we want to make sure that this doesn't impact the wetlands, and that's why there's a 50-foot buffer. We want to make sure that any disturbance that they do create, they mitigate to make sure that that runoff or whatever doesn't go on there. If they disturb vegetation, that it's replaced, that they come up with a meaningful way to, um, to mitigate the, the damage or, or alterations that they do there. So that's the, the kind of things we want to look at. We also know that these soils in this area are not great. You know, there's not good gravel. It's clay and very dense material that doesn't drain well. 
Um, if it weren't for the sewer line going by, there wouldn't be homes there because they couldn't build a septic system. So, you know, part of that sewer line going in, same thing as it's happened in other area of town, has made lots that have sat dormant for a long time buildable. Um, but they also have other issues. And, and I think the commission, at a minimum, is going to hire a consultant to take a look at the pieces that they have proposed. We're going to take a look at what they're proposing for mitigation, which at the moment doesn't seem like much, um, and, and then go from there. I was just going to say one of the things that uh, some of the abutters have brought up is stormwater related and situated as a stormwater bylaw. And this allows us to um, look at the plans that are submitted by the applicant's engineer and say that, you know, it, it sounds good on the plan, but we really need to check this out so that we don't have abutters or uh, people down at the bottom of Man Hill Extension getting flooded out. So especially in one like this with a slope, there's going to be vegetation disturbance. We'll hire somebody to you know, start with Greg's information and look at that, and then maybe offer some kind of suggestions as to how stormwater can be mitigated. So I mean, since we're lucky that at least we have the ability to do that review. If we were just looking at this under the Wetland Protection Act, we're just looking at is the vegetation going to get ruined, but this is a stormwater focus, I think. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. And you know, maybe it would, uh, I don't know if anybody else here has had a chance to even see this, but it really should be turned or two-sided, so, sorry. Uh, my name's Eileen Lagrateri, and I live at 106 Women And just to reiterate what my neighbors were saying, um, you know, there's no doubt why somebody would want to build a house there. I mean, there's no question, it's a beautiful spot. Um, I've been there about 15 years. And that, um, that road and area has been getting a lot of use. And if it could be bringing in trucks and all those different things, you really better consider what kind of heavy equipment you're bringing in, because that road is very, um, has been beaten up over the years, as long as the future has said. But in a broad <coughs> issue, there's great irony here tonight that I can't overlook. You know, this town has worked very hard and spent a lot of money to bring the sewer up to date, bring it to the town, and bring it to vulnerable areas, one of which is this Washington Pond, and to protect that environment. And we're sitting here tonight having spent a lot of time and effort protecting that area, and now it's allowing people to build basically on top of it. And there's a lot of homes that are already grandfathered in the situ that have been here for a hundred years, long before my home or not here that obviously everybody has a right to build their home. But I think there has to be a real sensitivity. You have a tough job, because as Richard said, now with the sewer, people can build wherever they want on a food system. And if you drive around Sidgwick, they're building there. And it's something you really have to consider, because I'm sure this will be a beautiful home, and I'm sure it will probably increase my home values in my neighborhood. And it's gonna compromise that environment because of just sheer size. So I think it's something we have a catch-22. You have the sewer, and now you can have a house wherever you want it. And I just think it's something that, as a clinician, you have a, a tough job ahead of you because you're going to have a lot more uh, people coming to build homes perched over wetlands that are going to be very controversial and are going to impact the, um, the environment in that whole constant squash the pond area. And that's why I'm saying that they need to think about the vegetation that's below this property, the runoff that's coming from this. Um, before we started this hearing tonight, there was discussion about algae forming on the Squashka Pond, and we've worked, as you point out, we've worked hard to clean that up. We've had long, long studies about the, the gates being opened or closed, the saltwater inundation better. We have these areas that are isolated by Stone Ave, and at the bottom of Man Hill, where water seems to collect fresh water which has created other issues so you're absolutely right and that's why we're going to have somebody take a look at it as well um, and then look at what it, it impacts and it is difficult because the sewering as you point out has will do so much to clean up a lot of the um, impurities whatever that have been going into Musquashka Pond but then we are going to see some development. And I'm sure there's a couple more pieces right to the south of this that are, are ready to go as, as well. So we just have to think about the best 
mitigation that we can extract the, the if it's a buildable piece. I mean, we'll look at all those those things and make sure that it does comply. The town has bylaws. We have to follow those bylaws, but we also have to make sure that that they do the best job that they can to um, mitigate the impact that they that they do on that property. When um, when they come to the plan that you might approve, who's in charge of following through that they follow the so what happens plan so that there's not any um, all of a sudden Change. There's a few pieces that happen there, and we don't. We're gonna we're gonna continue this t tonight. Um, but typically, once a plan gets approved, we write a set of orders uh, orders of conditions, and they list all the things that they're supposed to put on there. Part of that is what we call a pre-construction conference, where the person building the site meets with the agent, and they review, and maybe a consulting engineer that all their siltation is in place and where these plantings are going and we get a sequence of what's going to happen and then they move forward. Um, they can't get a certificate of compliance until all those things are put into place. So typically if there's financing involved or selling the property, um, that that won't happen until that certificate of compliance is granted so that they have to meet those those pieces. Now time goes on while that happens and it, it does take some monitoring, but that's part of the process um, that would that they, they would do here, and and um, so we we're, we're part of that. Anybody else? Yes, sir. We have a 50 foot no build, and then we have a 100 foot buffer. That building often takes place in the 100 foot buffer, but what we look for is mitigation for the in that area. So they may put additional plantings. Um, if there's invasive plant material on the property, we could look for that to get removed, to put um, plantings that would be more beneficial <laughs> habitat for birds, small wildlife, things like that. You know, there's probably a lot of things growing there now. Bittersweet, um, other invasive species, there's Phragmites at the bottom that really aren't beneficial um, to the environment. And if we could get some of those changed out and have plant material that would be more beneficial and, and more conducive for a healthy habitat, that would be a positive step from the commission standpoint. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, is there any possible way to increase the, the, the buffer zone to 100 feet? Because I don't think 5 feet would be doing that much. And considering moving that kind of equipment around, I know it's, I know it's better than nothing, but I'm just, would there be any possible way? I know it changed design of the house at that point, and like, that probably a lot of things, but I, I just see, at, I live right near there, and I, I know there will be a good amount of considering the gradient of that, and just, I really, I really consider that the marsh very important. I think increasing the buffer is important in order to do that. The, the, bi the buffer zone is set by a bylaw in the town. The, the commission has the discretion to increase the buffer zone in areas where it, it's adjacent to our water supply. But it doesn't have otherwise. It, it doesn't have that here. We can look for mitigation in the 50 to 100. And, and regulate what they're doing there to some degree. If we were to change that buffer zone, it would be going to like town meeting and saying we want to increase the buffer zone from 50 to 75 or whatever. I mean, there's other towns that only have 25 or 30 feet. I mean, I think Situate has one of the larger no-build zones in, in a lot of the surrounding towns. It's not to say that it couldn't be changed, but but that's what we have in a bylaw, and that's what the people that are proposing this project have to follow. But, you know, we can look at that house and realistically say there's no way that you can get a piece of equipment right up to that 50 foot and build and not disturb that. So that's why we want to say, you know, show us how you're going to do that or move it away a little bit. And, and my one last thing. Sure. Is, I mean, I'm not uh, like Other than the Bruins being on tonight, there's no reason why you can't. <laughs> <laughs> 
But like, is there any other method of protecting the wetland from um, runoff from the site, um, like other than something simple as hay bales? Because I've been by not not here, but at least in other parts of, of the state where I've been, they see hay bales and they don't have them. They don't. They, they're not being put down in a, like a very cohesive manner, and it's kind of just everything is kind of flooding through and doesn't end up catching anything. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he knows if there's a better method or if it's just hay bales. There's several different pieces that can, they have silt, they call silt socks, there's the hay bales, there's silt fence, and depending on the area and the soils and stuff, when we have an engineer look at that, he may look at it and say, there's no way you can disturb all this without taking more um, substantial measures than just hay bales. You know, there might be multiple ones, the, the way they dig up the site might have to be staged. I, I mean, there's a number of different things that we can look at. Then the, then the person that's developing the site has to guarantee that that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Not to say that it won't. When they were building the train, we had a huge yeah. piece that flooded out into the marsh and it cost the, the person, the, the contractor for the MBTA, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines because they didn't control that, those measures. So th that's the kind of thing that can happen. If someone fails to do the right job and that silt washed down in the squash coupon, it could cost the developer mm -hmm. a lot of money and they'd have to clean that up. Thank you. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Um, <coughs> are they proposing lawn mural on this? Yes. Yeah, there's one uh, immediately south of the house, and then there's Rick, lawn also. Can you turn it? I mean, it's kind of, and then I apologize. We've got to come up with a better way to. All, all along the side here, and then out back. This is all along the side. Happens to the runoff from the pesticides and fertilizer. Well, we might tell them they can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might. They might condition them. Seems like it's a standard condition. Pat, I was going to say for before the next uh, hearing, maybe if the corners of the house could be staked out or the corners of the deck and, and the flagging redone so that, you know, members could take a walk and actually see what it looks like, you know. Yeah, it's I a mean, good it's idea. thick brush, but I mean, if there's, there's a way to get out there, so you know. Brush is no hazard. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe what we should, because there is a fair amount of interest, maybe we could work something out with the engineer so that there's a site visit and then if there's a couple of abutters that want to take a look it's it's that the discretion of the developer they have the commission would go on it whether they want any abutters to do that or not but certainly the will set up something um, with the commission and we can notify um, you know, we don't have a, a, a listing I think we would have to set up a site visit yeah, if you want to set up a site visit Certainly, we'll have to stake it out, take it out, show you around. Okay. Sure. All right. I, I honestly think you've got enough stuff that you need to work on that we're going to have to continue this. And I think that the point made with some of these wrong, with these um, butters and the locusts and all that stuff, you sure there's nothing else missing on there? Check. I, I hope so. The pond, yeah. I'll admit the pond. I'll add the pond on. Yeah. 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 A rough crowd over there, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more question, Bobby Sullivan. Greg, I'm just curious how you're going to come up on this rat tail when you're holding yourself two feet wide between yes. my property and the other one, unless um, you purchase the property inside. The property directly south of us, we have a 15 foot wide easement over. So we have the, you have, we actually you have the benefit. Here. Okay. I have a nice tree on my tennis court that I believe is on my property that is very, very close. Okay. You okay? When I, when I go out to lay out these corners, I'll locate the tree and make the sure. The tree, I'd like to see that tree. Sure. Your septic system is also on the rat tail of my new buyer will be hooking up. There are two tanks sitting in that rat tail that we're going to put on the ground. Okay? That are on my client's property? Yes, on your client's property. Okay, mm -hmm. okay so I, had a, I had a survey of all. Yes, yes. Lava Associates yeah, and did it for the sample. Yeah. Put those tanks on. Okay. I'm sure they just didn't want to bring it to anybody's attention, but they're there. 
Okay. Um, Pat, you're not here on the 8th. Right. So I'd like to continue this for what's our meeting after the 8th? 22nd. Okay. Do you have an objection? Do you agree? Six thirty. So, do I have a motion to continue Sharon at um, six thirty, July twenty second? What's the address? One twenty four. Uh, lot three, three. Manhill to <coughs> July twenty second. Six thirty. At six thirty p.m. In the meantime, we'll set up a, a site visit with you. Okay. All right. Make a motion, Richard. Make a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. It happens. At least the house is out of here. You're saying this might be the bad thing. Perfect tower. Perfect tower. I would. I don't know that, but that's what I'd say. On June 24th, 2013, 6.50 p.m., the Town Hall of Citro Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citro Code of Bylaws. We got any application of Salvatore Privet. Privatera. To elevate the existing dwelling on property located at 121 Turner Road, situated. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Could somebody um, just ask them to take the conversation down the hall? Or outside. Yeah. Um, the applicants have, have owned a home for uh, several years at 121 Jr. Road, and they've applied for the federal grant to elevate the house up onto a new uh, concrete pier foundation. Uh, the existing dwelling, the property is outlined in yellow. Uh, the existing dwelling is shown in brown. The FEMA flood zone that the house lies in, the most restrictive is the uh, velocity zone at elevation 17. Um, the top of the piles will be at a minimum elevation of 19 to comply with the requirements of the state government code. And the first floor will be at approximately elevation uh, 21. All the details and structures and are included in the project was done by the Institute of the Marsh So with that, I'll ask any questions. Richard? Concrete foundation? Concrete pier? Pardon? Concrete piers. Concrete. No, I know what he means. I'm just... Concrete. Yeah. What you're going to do is uh, I'll pick the house up. Yep. Because you can't live, move it left or right, so no, you. these houses on the inside. So it's hard, hard to drive a pile through the house. If we tore this house, then we could. Ah. Uh, <coughs> I'm fine with it. No questions. No questions. No. 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 Just what's going to happen with the existing foundation there? Is that? So the existing foundation. What we'll do is remove that. It's going to be Seems like a good idea to me. Yeah. Motion to close. <laughs> Anybody in the audience? After 45 years, it's a good idea for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I second the motion. Yeah, that happened 30 years ago. Right, right. Do have a worry about Yeah. Probably 40 years ago. Yeah. So I have a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
Thank you very much. Well, is that a new record for the fastest hearing you ever had? When it's good, it's good. Yeah. The only thing you can see now over this would be the set of code of conditions. That's what we sign off on. It will be denied. It will be the next meeting of the people. So it's more of that. Okay, so now it's um, kind of more of a turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have all the, the if we have uh, we have the information. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. I have premium the questions to the entire yeah. meeting. It's closed and we're just going to render it. Paul? No, my mind. No, I got him. So, um, Gordon, Ocean Ave, new build and septic, this was continued? Yes. Sorry. Yep. Uh, Bill Orenberger, I'm here tonight on behalf of Dan Gordon. Dan is out of state, he's in Philadelphia, so he's not here, he may be here uh, at the next meeting. And uh, the green card has already been submitted on this. Greg Morris is here. So let's turn this, to, and I feel bad we've had so many people already here, but at least if you are got an interest, you probably need to sit over here if you want to see the plan. Okay. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Greg, but we already have a Title V septic system approved on this property. This property has been owned uh, in the Gordon family for, uh, before the end by his dad for a long period of time, and long and for 67 years. And the uh, end bought this property about 20 years ago, desirous of the time of the uh, come home for himself, never got to it, and the time has come for him to. Uh, Build on this and probably sell this food for a new home. But uh, this chunk show will have some other comments, but I'm going to have that right board the project. Okay. And just so that everybody knows, this hearing was opened the last time and the applicant requested that it be continued. So rather than read the spiel that we normally do, we opened this meeting, we opened this hearing at the last meeting and then immediately continued it um, for them to get some more information together. So mm -hmm. it's essentially starting this evening, but we did open it at the last meeting. And, and the one thing about, I'll just interject for a second is the plan uh, The plan was submitted with the NOI. Uh, subsequent to that, Greg and I know it, it just came in today. The response is, uh, we did have a meeting uh, with one of our immediate butters, and we listened to some of the issues that we had, which were a lot of more privacy oriented. And in another party, it's immediate proximity. And accordingly, one of the things we did is revise the location of the house. The house is a little smaller than the previous submission. And uh, the driveway is in over the front of the direct on the drive. Basically, the house has flip flop so the garage is now close to the street. Go ahead. Again, Gregory Morris, Morris Engineering. Um, as stated, this is a notice of intent stormwater permit for new single family home. The property is shown here on the plan. The property line is in gold. We have frontage on all sides of the property, actually. To the west, we have our frontage on Ocean Ave. That's where we'll be accessing from. The property also has frontage on Bailey's Causeway to the north, a gravel road known as Frontway, um, and then to the south, an unconstructed right of way known as South Ave. This property in its entirety here is 23,694 square feet. We had Brad Holmes, a professional wetland scientist, go out to delineate a wetland on the site. And what he, what he hung was the A-series flags, which are shown here. Um, and what this wetland is, is it's basically a bordering vegetated wetland that's accepting street runoff from Ocean Ave. There's a lot of water that comes down Ocean Ave and it drains into this wetland. Uh, we believe it was a man-made wetland. We have no documentation of that, but by the shape of it and the form of it out in the field, it conveys water down to a head wall at Bailey's Causeway right here at the northern corner of the property. And it flows under Bailey's Causeway to um, Salt Marsh across the street. 
The property itself uh, was largely cleared some time ago. It's mainly uh, maintained as lawn surface. There are several large trees within that lawn surface, and I have located them on the plan. But everything outside of this brush line is all maintained lawn right now. The brush line that's depicted on the plan here in the wetlands, uh, as outlined by Brad Holmes in his report, which was in the NOI, uh, consists mainly of non-native invasive species. The proposed project, the siting of the new home, we have a new access driveway off of Ocean Ave into a two-car garage. And then behind that, we have the main box of the house. The foundation, or the, por the porch of the property is located a minimum distance of 25 feet from the wetland. And the structure itself is just outside of that. I think it's 28 feet from the port concrete foundation to the BBW line. All of the house lies within that lawn surface. Um, there's no pushing back of the vegetation line or the brush line to achieve the location as we have it. Um, the house as it's cited is against the zoning setback to the south. We tried to keep the house as far from the wetland as feasible with maintaining this as a buildable lot. This lot was created, and I think it's important to know, this was created prior to situate having the 50-foot no disturbs. The septic system is located at the rear of the house. This is a three-bedroom septic system. Uh, has been approved by the Situate Board of Health. Consists of a new septic tank and then leaching chambers and a field configuration. They're located 55 feet from the BBW. And understanding the importance of maintaining a buffer, what we've prov provided is we've provided a split rail fence along the limit of the existing clearing. So that usually with that fence, that'll prevent any future encroachment onto the wetland side of the property. And we've also hired our wetland consultant, Brad Holmes, to develop a mitigation plan. This plan needs to be updated to reflect our new home configuration. This has our previous version, but it does maintain the same planting regimen that we will have with the project. And that is we're proposing to go into the buffer zone and to go into the wetland here, remove out the invasives, and then uh, through a series of plantings of more native species, provide species that are more common to the area that will provide a food source and a better habitat um, to mitigate the impacts from this site. As part of our filing, we submitted a stormwater report. We submitted stormwater calculations showing we comply with the two, the 10, the 25, and 100 year storm events for the rates and the volumes of runoff. That's achieved through a couple of ways. First off, we have an impervious drive, or we have a pervious driveway. It's a, it's a gravel or a shell driveway. So that helps reduce the impervious area of the site. We have a series of 1,000 gallon precast dry wells attached to the roof to promote infiltration. We have really good soil over here. It's all sand, two minute and inch per test rates. Um, and through the, through the use of the dry wells, through the use of the pervious driveway, we were able to match those rates and volumes for those storm events as noted. Um, the EP had no comments on this. This is not in an area um, designated as endangered species habitat. There were no certified permit rules on the state. Right, point on one thing, Greg. The, one of the things in, in the past that you have here, at least I reviewed the title and, and whatnot, is we're trying to, and as Brad Holmes in his report, this really degraded wetland. I mean, to the point of when you strip out the invasives, there's nothing there. It is all invasives. And so to basically replant the buffer with appropriate vegetation, and also to have wetland vegetation in there you know, functions in a way uh, that is best the environment. One of the issues though is uh, another issue in the handling here is that there's no, there's no easement on this property for drainage or anything else. And one of the things that we usually try to do in these aspects is we know uh, town has limited resources and whatnot is we're, we're coming up with, you know, what we think is a better way to do it instead of saying, hey, this water shouldn't be on our property. The reality it is and it doesn't make any sense to do that. I was involved with uh, Hadley Golf Course, we had a similar situation where we improved the drainage for everything. And uh, 
and this is a situation where we have it. One of the things that I think Greg is going to get into, this is shown on this, we want to get some input from the commission, is the head wall of the north side of the property there. Uh, Greg is going to propose and put together uh, a design there with some filtration to protect the salt marsh across the street. And I don't know if you, you know, how far you've got on that. But that's something that our client uh, you know, is willing to do uh, it will help improve the uh, environmental situation due to the salt. That's all I didn't mean to digress from that. <coughs> um, Kevin? I mean, half the house is in the 50. I don't know what else to say. Have, um, oh, why don't we keep rolling? Paul? Uh, I, it's definitely, you know, a good job the way you moved it around so there's less incursion. Um, I mean, there's kind of, I agree, there's two sides to the deal, though. It, yes. is, it is a developed area already. Um, you know, they minimize the incursion. The mitigation, if they get rid of all the invasives, could be a beneficial thing. And uh, some new plants, the fencing's a good thing. And uh, am I missing, or is there a foundation plan with this, or? There, there isn't a separate foundation, but what we're proposing is under, under the house here, that is a poured concrete foundation. Um, it provides a six foot high uh, ceiling height. Okay. Just for storage. Richard, um, I'm not, I I really can't see the that's a that's a revised plan now. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was revised okay. today. Uh, we just met with one of the abutters uh, at the end of last week, and mm -hmm. so we weren't able to get it in last mm -hmm. week. Where is the abutter on this map? The the abutters were uh, right there. Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Our, pr our previous version of the plan had the, the garage at the rear of right. the property and had access over South Ave. South Ave is an unconstructed right of way, um, you know, that we would have rights out to the center line. We had proposed a driveway up South Ave access us. By doing this now, we've pulled the driveway, we've pulled the vehicles all further away from the Hennessy property. Um, and I think there was concern too with um, some of the other abutters regarding headlights coming up south there. Just, on just to clarify that, block shades, you better start on the block right there. Uh, so now we've eliminated that as well by making it so all our headlight traffic is on to our house. Uh, so where's the driveway come in now, Greg? The driveway now is straight straight on to the, to the garage right here. Now the other thing that by doing this, it allowed us to save, uh, this is approximately a 36 inch right here that was going to be removed. Now we've saved that. I like a lot of it. I really do like a lot of it, but I, I agree with Kevin. You still got half of it in the 50 foot zone and mitigation is going to be important. And second of all, I mean, I personally like to see I'd like to see the plan as it's really going to be, not what it was, which is unfortunate. I understand why, but I, I was looking for the wrong plan. Um, and, and technically, a submittal like that, we'd, we could just continue this. I think yeah. for the purpose of discussion, we'll let this go on, but we're probably going to want to have a, a complete plan. Right. Um, yeah. Can I, uh, let's see. Anybody else want? I do have a just a very just a point of clarification. You had said that the this was uh, this site was developed before the 50 foot buffer zone was in place in situ. So is there an inference that it doesn't apply? No, 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 no. 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 Okay, okay. No, just no, a point no. Of All right. The, the, the point being that the break was alluding to is that at the time at the time when I client and again this is Dad's property which Gary owns the vast majority of it. And, uh, and this came off. Well, one of the issues relating to it was actually prior to this thing. He actually has a letter from the city zoning enforcement officer and building inspector saying it's a building a lot back in the early 90s. And obviously, that isn't the story 
it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a commission issue. The laws have changed since. Well, it could be a buildable lot because of size and setback, but right. the wetlands issue don't <laughs> typically go into the building department. Sure, that wasn't that wasn't a bylaw. But I don't need to interrupt. Pat. Well, I was just going to say, I, I think there's no doubt that the mitigation that's proposed on plantings would be a great improvement over what is there now for wetlands. It's pretty much all invasive, and if it's ripped out and replanted, that would help. Um, but I think my question would be, the applicant made an effort to meet with the butters and talk about how to accommodate them. I think we have a house and a garage that's in the 50. Is there some give and take as to how much can be pulled out of the 50? I mean, it right. may be a buildable lot, we're getting some mitigation, but there's still, I mean, it's a big garage, good sized house. Is there some effort to, you know, pull it more from right. the wetland? I guess my, when I first looked at this, I'm thinking, well, why the heck didn't they just flip this whole thing around and shift the house closer to the septic and put the garage, you know, right. so that that stepping um, I know that you have to be a certain distance from the septic, but if you don't have a full basement, can't you be closer? Yeah, so we have, under the, under the house, we have the back half of the house here on a slab foundation. A slab has a 10-foot setback, and we have it proposed at 10.2 from the septic. The, the septic itself is minimal sized. As I said, this is a three-bedroom, which is... Um, the minimum size that Title V is required. So you can't put that foundation any closer to the septic than you are right now? Ten feet's the minimum. And the septic is at the minimum to the property we, line. We modified it. Originally it was going to be 20 feet. And talking to me actually forewent the basement just to pull it back another 10 feet more than it would have been. Under the prior configuration, it was only 10 feet because of the garage. And we flip flopped right. it. You ran into the other 20 foot issue. This, this house is the main box of the house. It's 38 feet in depth um, by 36 feet in depth. And that's one of the other things with the prior configuration was there was the house and there was the garage and basically what happened was we pushed the garage into the house already since the since the original submission we had, which uh, reduced somewhat the size of that, but you know, we wanted obviously So there's a couple of bumpers in the family room. What's the big deal? <laughs> And, uh, but just to, you know, our, our clients are amenable to try to find some other mitigating issues that are here, but, uh, you know, particularly we want to be, you know, addressed to the extent and reasonably can with any of the neighbors. And we heard some, uh, you know, legitimate concerns of at least the, the two neighbors that we thought would impact the most. And we basically did a pretty radical redesigned to try to accommodate them to protect their privacy and some of the other issues in the state. Mm -hmm. um, is, has everybody commented to the thing? How about anybody in the audience? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Gary Hennessy. Um, I owned uh, the property at, uh, at one time, 20 years ago, and sold it to me to Pleasant Dan, to the county of Billings. Um, sold it with the understanding that uh, it would be kept in the family. I didn't intend to build on it for several reasons. Um, so I had two shots, one about a year ago, when Dan wrote to me after his father died at 107. I thought he was born in the house. Uh, that uh, he'd now like to put it on the market. Uh, on the shop. Uh, to, uh, I would say, Dan was probably not privy to that conversation. This was done with the estate lawyers and Dan's father and myself. And, uh, we discussed ways to come up with a, um, uh, the second shot was uh, when uh, uh, I found out uh, the type of uh, house that was going to go on the property. Uh, and uh, I had been led to believe by no one in an official capacity that uh, the house uh, would not uh, the property would because of the uh, because of the wetlands the property would not support a large structure it met the building requirements of frontage on both Ocean Avenue 
and Bailey's Causeway for actually two small $10,000, $10,000 square foot parcel. So uh, I wasn't too, you know, knowing that, I really wasn't overly concerned uh, about anyone else putting them in a, a large house there. So that was the other shot. A um, couple things I, I would like to comment on. Thanks. The version two is much better. Uh, that that great. If it meets all the other requirements, uh, uh, I'm very happy uh, for version two. Um, uh, I, I, of course, I'm a neophyte in this business, and uh, I learned a few things tonight just sitting here. I'd never heard of a buffer zone. I didn't know about the 100 foot buffer zone. But I would like to point out the buffer zone uh, covers the entire property. Does. Such a run through it. Covers the whole entire property. The no build zone runs right through the building. Yeah, I'm certainly not a, a vindictive guy. I want to keep relations with my cousin fine. And I certainly wouldn't stand in the way and I appreciate it. Uh, Billy's help on, on version two, that helped me a lot. I know it helped uh, so what can happen mr. Hennessy the town of Situate has a bylaw that says that you can't build in a 50-foot zone the state of Massachusetts has a different version of that someone can appeal that at some point it's a long drawn-out battle some people choose to just say it's not worth the time others can can battle that right. um, there's been cases where people have overridden the town's bylaw um, with different means mm -hmm. so you can almost never say never yeah. um, on the other hand it's the Commission's responsibility to look at the these pieces that were enacted by former members in the town of situate and try to uphold those rules and regulations as close as we can um, Sometimes you, you look at these wetlands pieces and say, how effective are they? What do they contribute? If, if that were a wetlands that contributed a substantial amount of, of filtering or whatever, um, you'd say, well, there's no way that they're going to build something on this because that's a major piece. Another person might look at it and say, this is really not much of a wetlands at all. It doesn't function much as a wetlands. It doesn't have any real impact. Um, by doing this additional plantings, by working on the head wall, by doing some other mitigation members me methods or, or whatever, that's a substantial improvement over, over what's there. The Commission could deny this project. There's no doubt about it being in the 50-foot zone, the commission could say no. It doesn't mean that the, that the applicant couldn't then go to the state and say, you know, we want to override this with these measures. And, and you know, who knows what would, would happen. But the commission, is this your group? Our group are, could deny this based on the bylaws that we have right now. We, it's in the 50-foot buffer and, and we could do that. Um, but again, then it would be the applicant could apply or appeal to the state and say, well, these are the other pieces that fit into that, and they may, they may prevail. So sometimes it's best to look at this and say, is it beneficial to everybody? You know, can we look at the house and say maybe the house is too big? There needs to be some, some shrink in there. Is there enough mitigation offered <coughs> to be important to this site? Those are the things we can look at. So th there's a fair amount going on here. It seems like a simple lot, but there's actually a fair amount of um, issues to be de decided. Well, that's a good rundown. I appreciate it. Thanks. And yep. Thanks for the help. Um, Why don't we take in your, your neighbors as well and see what's going on. Sure. Uh, Mark Thompson, 26 Village Causeway. I, my property makes up a whole bottom right chunk down there. Yep. Um, this property has been in my family for uh, probably more than 50 years. I've had the benefit of 
seeing your know, property over the course of time and seeing how the land has changed in the back as it has seen moved in and things have developed around the area. Um, I appreciate what Mr. Horvath and Mr. Moser put in. This is kind of the first time I've seen things and we haven't talked about this as far as mitigation is concerned. Um, when I look at this, the first thing that, that I see is I guess what everybody has already brought up. More than 50% of the house is in 50 foot zone. So I mean, not to be a dead horse, but I understand that the world is not black and white, but this kind of seems to go past gray. We're not talking a couple feet over, we're talking the vast majority of the properties inside that zone. So when we look at, I guess, why the Conservation Commission set this up in the first place, if we're going to go that far, encroaching into the 50 foot zone, it seems like we might have it. It's a pretty uh, serious encroachment. Um, when you look at what they have, I guess, laid out here in the wetlands, um, I have serious concerns kind of being on the lower part of this. I guess it's difficult to see, at least from what I have, the way that the water flows there. There have always been serious water problems, and I'm at the, the lower end of the spectrum. So I've got water problems like crazy. When we look at this, changes in elevation, what's going to happen with the septic system, we're kind of talking about this as roadway runoff. I've seen over the course of my 40 plus years being involved in this property, how that water works back there. So with me being a mother on this, I'm seriously concerned about what's going to happen in my property, in my basement, with all the water that's going to go. Um, the other thing that was brought up, which, which I appreciate that Mr. Holmes was talking about changing around the wetlands, putting in different types of vegetation in there. That's great, I guess, when we're looking at this as a wetland standpoint. But the only benefit that I have out of this right now, while it's not necessarily a concern for you guys, is a privacy aspect. That, I forget exactly what you call it, but that vegetation that's in there right now is the only buffer zone that I have. As soon as you go through and wipe all of that out, again, when you look at the elevation of this, it's a little bit deceiving. This property is right on top of that. When you go out and look at the site and see the way this elevation changes, mm -hmm. they take all of that out any of that buffer zone goes away. Um, so th there are multiple things in here that are concerning outside of the focus on this. Okay. I think, oh, go ahead. Yeah, just to respond to Mark, is two things Mark can do to get together on is, the first is from, from the drainage aspect of this. Uh, there's a stormwater permit going, so so by law, it kind of increases the situation. As far as, as far as the other thing goes, and I'll talk to you with our client, if you need a vegetative buffer or something, we'll definitely work with you at our expense to replace what's being removed because from an environmental standpoint, and I'm not an environmental scientist, it's a much better situation for the wetlands. But uh, as a matter of fact, before you go, I'd like to speak with you. But uh, as I already said, as Dan wants to try to address, particularly those most impacted, and if this is something that's giving that's giving your family a you know visual buffer from this, then let's see what we can do to replace that. So so it doesn't have any, any impact on you. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. <coughs> on that drainage. And your name is? I'm, I'm sorry. Robert Shea, Fairly Fairly's Causeway. Okay. <clears throat> On that drainage ditch, as it goes through that head wall, mm -hmm. that, that slowed down by debris. But if you walk across the street, the month of December, January, February, and March, the fish come in there lay eggs under the sun when this stuff drains in. And you oh. can see that whole water alive with baby fish. Huh. And then the month of March, when they have a super high tide, that's when they all go down to the sea. So if we mess with this head wall and allow all this road runoff into that, I think we're looking for trouble and we'll annihilate this fish. Okay. What we're saying is not to mess with the head wall. Yeah. We're talking about put, making it better with an additional filtration with it. So yeah. the head wall stays, but to make it actually It better. actually fills right up to the top, and then the excess runs down the street. So it's not giving an impact to that marsh at all, which is a good thing. A regular thing. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Hennessy. Quick comment. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It, it's not just storm runoff, although that's a good part of it. Uh, isn't there uh, another source of the water starting from uh, around the uh, the underground stream starting from around the uh, Gulf Coast area is what I've been told. Yeah, I mean, I, not being an engineer, but the groundwater that's there is got to be ridiculously high because my pump will go constantly, even if there's no stormwater coming down. I mean, it's, it's right there. 
Um, but it does backfeed to a set. I mean, that's a salt marsh that's right on the other side of the, the road. So I don't know if it's a two-way street where the, the salt water kind of starts to creep up a little bit and goes back and forth. But the other positive is the marsh. That might be something that you want to ask Brad to address is whether or not that actually moves in, in the, I don't know if there's any flapper valves there, if it's just a culvert or... Yeah, I, I want to say that we're, we're above what the mean high water line is um, with the elevations there, but I can... I can I'd, I'd like to have Brad sure. get back to us on that. Yeah. Um, I th and I think just so that you guys understand, I mean, regardless of whether all the neighbors are, are in agreement on that, there's still the standards that... The, the one thing I, I just point out in the revisit because I know the meeting is going to be continued, but you know, we feel we can meet and demonstrate that the whole point of amnesty on the importance of the 50 foot buffer zone, but specifically in the bylaw, there's a provision for exceptions to the 50 foot buffer script, which we feel if you have the functionality to meet the, the purposes of the bylaw and the Weapons Protection Act, which we feel we do, we can demonstrate, mm -hmm. then that specifically was contemplated when the bylaw was adopted to address that. And in addition to that, there's a waiver provision, which, you know, if it, you know in other words, it, it, the standard, very simply, is if what you're proposing will not adversely affect any area subject to protection and regulations, then a waiver is something that is within the purview of the board and the standards within the discretion. So we'll get more into this next thing. We feel we can demonstrate this pretty strongly, but one of the things from a commission standpoint, we're talking about we have presented some mitigation and and uh, this head wall situation is more, but as, as I said, just as we're willing to try to work with the neighbors to address their issues, there are other things that, you know, from a commission standpoint, uh, that you think would be helpful from an environmental standpoint. And, you know, we certainly, we're all, and I, if you want to get them through the path, we certainly happy to listen has, to them and see what we can accommodate. Has anybody been out there to look at this site? Yeah. Okay. I, I know the site. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to maybe look just like the other one, arrange to have yeah. an opportunity to look at that. I can tell you that from past experience on the other side of the road, that was a mess last year during a couple of storms. I mean, the debris and whatnot on the other side of the road was just thrown in there, and it's been just a trash. It's a shame. It's in mine, it, and there's just all kinds of debris that because stuff will flow up from the glades area in the back um, and stuff gets washed over and certainly cleaning up a lot of that maybe even to your point of having you know well but what can sometimes happen and we've been trying to work with the town like the runoff from the parking areas and stuff like that is to try to minimize oil dirt sediment that goes in there that could be harmful and if there's a way to look at those sort of things when we address all of this as a as a whole it, it, it may be beneficial to, to take a look at that and, and see what happens and you know but the point that Mr. Thompson made you know he's at the bottom of the piece here he's catching a lot of this when you make up more of an area impervious when you disturb a big area is that going to move more water towards his property and we have that stormwater piece to review as well so there's a lot to look at there's other dynamics that happen it just as the case on Hadley where the ground is almost non it's so solid it's so much clay mine it's almost the opposite a lot of that is all gravel and as you point out the the golf course is on the other side and I'm no hydrologist but certainly there can be some movement and why does the water break out in this area here is is something that we you may want to think about when you did your perks what did you find there Greg yeah so I mean we we did perks at, at the high tide and we had elevation seven seemed to be the, the highest groundwater table that we used and what was the material sand it's all sand that that material can the water can just move up and down in that without any issue. So whatever whatever's going on in the marsh and those areas is where the water table is. And that's why some of those houses like yours right along Bailey's Causeway are pretty susceptible to it's extreme can build up also sometimes and it actually even supported a family of ducks about uh, four or five years ago. 
Yes, my name is Jamie Davidson, and I reside at 32 Davis Highway, which is to the east of this spot. Yep. And um, there were just two comments that Greg had made on the map. He said the majority of the lot was, was lawn and grass. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that it's not quite as manicured as it sounds. It's very, uh, you know, it's not even. Yeah. And so I think that they would have to bring it up to a certain level to make that even. And being right beside it, we're just wondering where else we can have the runoff. That, and we would be east of the mountain property. So we would sort of be down. And I'm just wondering if they, if they are allowed to go forward and they... I don't think there's any filling proposed here. I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, Right? They wouldn't be allowed to fill. And then also, he mentioned about the creek, what we call the salt marsh creek, but he said that it appears to be man made, but I think it is a salt marsh creek. It's down at the end by the entrance to our driveway where they were proposing a fence. But I was also wondering that during construction, that's right at the wetlands, wouldn't, they wouldn't allow the construction vehicles to enter on and off the property that way. And they wouldn't actually be able to drive. Can you, I, I, you know what, you can't, why don't you come up? You mean the gravel road that's there? Uh, no. No, why don't you? Gravel road. You just need the gravel road. Ms. Davidson, why don't you come up and maybe Greg can show you where they're thinking about coming in so you can. <coughs> I think you mentioned from Ocean where the family would drive in, but what about the construction vehicles? In other words, they wouldn't be able to come right in here because oh, no. of the drainage. No. Correct. And so they would be going up and down the, the construction vehicles would come up and down the driveway, or would they only be coming in through? I think we'd entertain yeah, we have a we, yeah but we haven't uh, one of the things i, I did speak briefly about you know blood is actually that's a 30 foot wide, wide way which actually the, which the, way are we talking about the front way, the front way there to gravel road that's how blood gets up to his house and the other property which he owns up there and uh you know ba basically you can see there's trees and everything half of it the half closest to us is all vegetated whatever there's no intention of disturbing that or moving anything because i know that's an important issue uh with the shades and so the, the the answer is we can we can revisit that and whatever i'm not a construction guy but i you know i don't know you, you may have to come up there somewhat in order to build the septic system or, or, or do something, but that, that's not going to be, you can see by the design of this, this isn't the access to the property. And, not, and none of those trees that are on the front way are supposed to be removed. No. Between two, I think. Okay. Anybody else? Pat? I just had a quick comment. If you're going to be planning on the head wall, make sure you check with Public Works. You had a recent one and you coordinated yeah. with Public Works because they might have some plans for that same. Area. So, I think again, where Pat, I'd like Pat to be part of this, and w he's not going to be around on the eighth, so the twenty-second. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, let's get a site visit, um, and let's think about some of those issues um, that were brought up tonight, and see if we can address those. Okay. What time are we on the twenty-second? Six forty. Six forty. Great. Well, we're going to give that other one twenty minutes, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. You think? Might want to bump it back. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make, you want yeah, and then they'll call in and it'll be continued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's waiting. let's keep it tight because yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, just be prepared that you may not be. I'm just good. Thank you very much. All right. We actually need. A we got a ways to go here, so don't uh, appreciate your input. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll be in touch. The office will be in touch to arrange. A site, a site visit. Yeah, we'll, okay. We'll okay. You know what? Um, we have. You have contacts for these folks, right, Bill? Yeah, I'm gonna get Mark's telephone number. All right. Mr. Hennessy, are the Gordon sisters, you're, you're related? My yeah. Okay. I built the addition on the <laughs> Episcopal Church that they paid for 30 something years ago, and I can remember sitting with them at the yeah. church service they when they dedicated it. They were, they were real characters. characters I've ever met. Pretty they funny. Food. Yeah. Food. Well, I don't know about that. They never married twins. Yeah. Well, maybe they knew more than. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not cool. Don't go there. Don't go there. They were. They were. They should. I remember they were sharing a purse that day at the service, and there was a tug of war going on on the pew. Of.
this is well done. Yeah. They didn't sign in or do anything. They, they, they can't. They, they did it during the tournament one time. So they said, uh, they can't be out there. This is a tournament. So, Utah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> their father really, really bought that. Right, well, if, <laughs> yeah, when you own part of it, it's <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> thanks a lot. It was, a, it was so funny. Um, what else we got? I don't think Mike Viviano was here. I don't think they got the septic. Um, so do we want to continue that? Yeah. Again? We'll continue. To July 8th, 6.50. Sounds good. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Okay, and then uh, enforcement pieces 181 Edward Foster. Yeah, I'm, most of them it's either unchanged or they receive the letters 181 Foster. They just got back into town today, so rather than have them come in tonight, I said we'd schedule a trip out to meet with them. This okay. is one you dealt with in the past. Yes. Um, some of the other ones, Ann Vinyl, there was a graduation going on when I was there the other day, so they still need a visit, but I haven't been able to get in there. Gardner's file on um, an NOI, Chief Justice Cushion, the letter's going out. Uh, Country Way, the pipe still has not been cut down at the grist mill there. They were supposed to cut the pipe and not have it go into the stream. It's taken them a long time, but uh, they say they're going to do it. Um, I've got a hacksaw. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's right where uh, the park is, real obvious visited spot. Um, Central Lab, the marine equipment, this was um, Russ's project. And um, we had talked about the 24th, and he had contacted us about maybe needing more time, but. I didn't do the formal paperwork, but I figured I'd come in because I guess. Sure, and I just you have to so state your. Uh, sure, Russell Clark, 8 Webster Street. I, I just felt bad. It's been um, not a good time to be here, but I figured I didn't get the stuff in, so I just sure. come in and not trying to hide from you or anything else. Yeah, so we had sent you a letter because of some trailers and pieces that are parked on that property. You've already talked to Pat about yes, that. Several times. Okay. Yeah. And basically, we're looking for filing to determine what can and can't happen there. Absolutely, and I, I've got. You know what lot size that? Have you seen? Yeah, I'll give you an assessment map. Yeah, anyway. I haven't seen. And okay. um, I'm hoping, and we got permission, of course, in a couple of weeks to put an NOI together, and then I'll show you exactly what I want to do. Okay. Which isn't much. Yeah, okay. All right. So why don't we? Can we can we agree that by the twenty eighth? Yeah, July. Eighth of July. Eighth of July. Can you get in by the eighth of July? I have to do another two weeks. It's a big holiday weekend. Is there anything on the property now, Mr. Clark? There's my trailer and another trailer. Can you get it off there in the meantime? I have no other place to put it, and that was the intent of buying that piece of property where I live down in Umrock. I don't have any room. And where the storage is that I had used previously is kind of valid. So I'm in a I'm in an area that's really not. I you know we can't we don't want to hear this we now. can't sort of informally hear this and then hear it again. All right, all right. Um, I mean I'd be inclined to give you more time if we could work with the stuff that's there, but I mean you, it, technically you're already in violation right. as we see it. You know you may prove us wrong, but I'm um, hoping to. In a professional um, manner. Yeah, no, hey. <laughs> it's America. Russell, aren't there some buoys out there too? There's three uh, channel markers. Yeah, they're kind of semi retired, but I think I'm pulling one out of retirement this week. So, yeah. I haven't been down there, so I'm going to. Well, he, he stated it correctly. There are two trailers there, and there are some uh, channel markers that are there. And the, the issue, as I see it, someone who also lives there is not that you're trying to be a bad guy or anything but other people see it and they say okay we can do it too mm -hmm. and that's what we're running up against we try to be consistent mm -hmm. and that's why we need the notice sure. so, yes, so that, I don't and the I sooner the better ago. because yeah. you know if you wait a month then you know you already got the whole season out of it is what it really amounts to and yeah. that's what upsets anybody in the area that 
thinks they have a vested interest in it. Yeah. So that's why we're so concerned about temporarily getting out of it, filing the notice of intent, yeah. and seeing what happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, I've got uh, benchmarks set. I've got my plans. I got my research done, and uh, I just got to go out and do a little survey and, and come in. I've, I've got. Uh, so to be to have a hearing on the eighth. When do we have? When will we have to have that invite? Five days in the paper, three or four days. And we have the fourth. And we have the fourth of July. So what? I'm I'm just trying to back up and. It'd be like Thursday this week, I think, is what the paper yeah, says. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing on this one too is that you know the same treatment is being given to the other people that have stuff on the marsh. We have we've talked to two, and then there's a third one who's got pocket plus. We don't know who they are, but. Everybody on that side of the street is going to be receiving a letter. And some are more disturbed areas than others, but it's all marsh and it's all resource areas. So people that don't file, either have to remove it or file. So right, that whole side of the streets, docks, excavators, yes. boats. Yeah. Um, right. You're not being singled out. <laughs> No, 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 I never, no, never, never. Ever but you're that. saying there's other violations that we're going to have to address yes. as well? Yeah, we've Absolutely. talked to two of them already <laughs> about filing, and, and there's a third one we haven't found out who the person is yet, but they'll also be getting a letter about that, too. So. I just felt it important I'd come in and first. No, I appreciate you being here tonight. Don't. <coughs> Russell and I shouldn't just be meeting alone. You, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> And I invite anybody down any time, uh, but maybe it's after the notice of intent. Yes, filed. typically would, yeah. or, or when it's filed, then we, whatever, we'd get out and take a look and see. Um, well, I'm going to leave it up to the rest of you guys, whether it's the 8th or the... Oh, I'm just going to ask, uh, th these highlighted lots, that you own all these? Yes. Or Now, is it all, looking at all these lots, are they all got dune grass on them? Is it all uh, kind of the same, or some of it cobble? Um, There's no cobble. I can explain it if, if it's all right. Look, look, you know what? I, I'd rather just be able to get down there and get a filing okay. and all that sort of stuff rather than start a hearing that we don't even have. Right. I mean, there's nobody else here. We should be advertising this and people should be right. here. Right. Make sure everyone's seen it and have all the information. Yeah. And then so it's just it. a matter, to me, it's just a matter of how soon we want to do it. We can't. Right. right. So. That has to be the 20th thing. 22nd. Okay. But you got to have it all in. Yeah. Or. Then we'll start finding you, and then we'll no, no, just, no, no. it'll we get down that road. Okay. I've been in town my whole life, and I'm not. Okay. Excuse me, Carol. What would be the date for the 22nd then? Because it, the newspapers and all that. Because it's we keep thinking it's a week, but it's more because of um, how long the newspaper has to have it, and then how many days it has to be in in advance. It's got to be the 10th or the 11th. The 11th of the very late into the morning. 10th. Okay. Okay. Russell, did you hear that? So your filing has to be into the commission by the 10th. By July 10th. In order to make the hearing on the 22nd. There you go. All right. No Fourth of July celebrations for you. Sounds kind of eliminated them anyway. Thank you. Guys. I didn't say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> yeah. We'll just know there fireworks or fires <laughs> or fun. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I can say something with that, but I'm gonna. That's okay. Yeah, just point out that. Yeah. How? What else we got? Certificates of Compliance. 101 and 107 Border Street. You and I looked at those. They look good to me. Everybody gonna go with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Pat and I roamed around. We both wished that we lived on 101 really? or 107. This one though, we do, we do really have to split the uh, certificate on this because one house hasn't come in yet. They're both on one order of conditions. One we're fine with and the other we don't know with the boss. Okay. Yeah. What were you going to say, Bill? I, I didn't know. Is that the new one at the very end? No. No, no, no. This no, has been not, up for a while. Oh. Lisa. We're not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And These are two that are further down around the bend, and uh -huh. they've been completed for a while. And there was one small discrepancy. There was a tiny retaining wall, but it didn't have any impact, and it really looked sharp. I think they did a good job. Yeah, it was good. And then the other one, we ate border since we went. He replanted the whole thing, put a little fence up, everything. So Great. Okay. Yeah. So we don't even have to vote those as long no. as they're all... Did they send the money in, Carol? The checks? That we need. Checks we need, yeah. Checks we got. We got, okay. Okay. Do you think that you can put together some thoughts on this minor activities thing that we can yeah. talk about when so you really get back? It's one is the scope of what's going to be defined as a minor activity, and two is how do we follow it through the process and right. follow it up at the right. end, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll get some. Work on that while you're on vacation. All right. I'll bring it with me. <laughs> that way you won't be bored. <laughs> I was looking for something to do on that vacation. Yeah. And if there's going to be a permit of some type. All right. Yes. That's going to be. Right. Yep. And, and a fee. And a fee. And then yeah. Carol can figure out how much she wants for him. To be Maybe we had to run it by legal counsel, too. Just to yeah, the, <laughs> that'll just cost us money. You're right. And you just call it guidelines. Yeah. Uh, Rosemary? Let's see. That's a good question referring back to something you talked about in the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, that's a quick one. Can, Pat, can you tell me where the uh, where the ramp is that Mr. Salamando is suggesting might be? It's, if you're coming in off of Central into his property, it's to the left side of that. And it, there's another marina boatyard. And there's something there currently that goes, I think, 8 or 10 feet out into the river. And you, it's inaccessible either because of um, buildup of silt and so, the sand and the river. Rosemary, you lived down there. if you drove yes. right by Russell Clark's house and went straight, apparently that's the ramp. Why don't you? Why don't you that's and Richard? Why don't you and oh, yeah. Rosemary? Why don't you and thought. Why don't you and Richard try to launch something there and let us know at the next yeah. meeting? Yeah, if yeah. <laughs> we just launched our. Sims just launched our boat there. And you were able to do it okay? Yes, the town. Voted twenty-five thousand dollars several years ago at town meeting to um, revamp them. Now, see, I, I, you said it. I wasn't sure it was Scalamari's. I wasn't sure it went with Well, well we better figure out what all that is. So we're not going to yeah, move yeah. on. And I'll talk with um, Mark Pass. And we need a submittal, though, from, oh, yeah. from yeah. them and a plan. Right. And, and right. He did come up in front of the waterways. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. a while ago, yeah. Okay, is there any way, like, you can backfeed the game into the thing? So, are you watching it? What? Are you watching the game? No, not right now. Nobody has a DVR. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's where Kevin went, I bet. Yeah, he did. He said he had to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, and not, Paul it's not the first 30 minutes that yeah, matter. Paul would have been yeah, always the last 30 minutes. It's going to 1130. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, but let's. I, definitely, we want to hear a lot more about that before we agree to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Actually, the easiest thing for him to do to be just rent out two boats. <laughs> yeah.